Hi guys, welcome to church for Home of Christ Kids. I'm so glad to have you with us on week four of this series where we are focusing on getting stronger as Christians. And if you recall, we are using the example of a runner who has this high level of commitment to their training and they practice and they prepare for the race ahead of time so they can become stronger and have success. And we as a church, we want to follow that example and be equally committed to getting stronger in our faith and to do the things that we know will push us forward and help us become stronger people of God. Do you recall some of the ways we already learned about? Just some of the basic things we do as believers to grow and to become strong. Let's see. The first week, it was decide to be committed and make a plan and stay with it. And then we learned about reading the Bible. And we heard how it's one of the chief ways that we get to hear from God. Next, it was our prayer life and working on how we can talk to God. And today, well, today we are learning something that has to do with this. Do you know what this is? Really, guess it could be anything. And we'll find out exactly what it's used for a little later in the show. But before that, we have our Hawk 5 Kids Rubber Duck Races with us again. Now, they have been battling it out on the racetrack each week. And up until now, each duck has won a race. So they're all equal. Who do you think will break out ahead and win today? I'll tell you, they have been training hard all week. I heard they were up at dawn and working out until like dinner time every day, all in hopes of taking home the win today. Conditions are a little windy out at the course today, so we'll see if that has any effect on these fierce competitors. Okay, I'm getting the signal that race officials are standing by and ready. So let's go live over to race number four, about to begin.
and blue comes in for the win today. I guess all blue's hard work practicing those flips and those turns really paid off. Isn't it thrilling to like watch these elite athletes battle it out? Let's head over to the winner's board and see which Hawk 5 kids selected blue for the win today. Well, a shout out to them for picking the winner. Nicely done, guys. Now, everybody, I want you to remember that this month has five Sundays. So the Ducks will race one last time next week. How about you send us your pick on who wins the final race in the series? Will it be yellow? Could it be blue? Or will pink win it all? Send us your pick for race number five this week. Now, on to today's lesson. So, earlier we looked at this item and we heard that it had something to do with this week's topic. Something else that will help us get stronger as Christians. Did any of you know what this is used for? Well, it's called a runner's baton. And it's used in relay races to pass from one runner to another. And as you can imagine, it takes some skill to get that timing of the handoff working smoothly. It takes practice and preparation. And today, it's here to teach us about how we pass on Jesus to another person, about how we share Christ with others. And talking to people about Jesus can be something that does take us practice and preparation to get good at. But I really love this part of being in God's family because sharing Jesus with someone is the greatest gift you could ever give them, right? It's basically the main way that non-believers come into God's family by someone else telling them about it, someone sharing God's love with them. So if we have this precious treasure of Jesus that the whole world needs, we probably should take a little time to get good at talking to people about it. And I hear you, that's not always easy. And it can feel risky sometimes. But telling others about Jesus is the way that God set up his kingdom to work. His plan is to have you and me in charge of that to make sure that the people around us hear about God's great love. You and me, we're in charge of that. Uh, I don't know about you, but there are some days when I don't feel very worthy of being God's spokesperson. Sometimes the voice in my head keeps telling me that God can't possibly use me to tell others about him because I'm just not a good enough Christian. I make too many mistakes or I should pray way more than I do. I'm just not good enough. Do you ever feel that way? Me too. But what I have to remember is that the voice in my head that's telling me I'm not holy enough to share Jesus with others is simply not true. Now, here's the crazy thing, guys, okay? God knew that you and I were going to be a little lame. It's not a surprise to God that 
we fail him sometimes. He knows this about us, right? He knows us. And yet, he still chose us to be the ones to pass Jesus on to the world. I kind of wonder, what was he thinking, huh? I guess he knows what he's doing though, because he is God. And I have come to accept this, that God uses imperfect people to tell his story. Yep, that's the way he wants it. And I guess there are a lot of imperfect people in the church. So I guess there'll never be a shortage of us, right? So as one of these forgiven people living my less than perfect Christian life, I have to accept this assignment of sharing Jesus with others and not put it off to people that I think are holier or better Christians than I am. I have to make it a part of who I am. And how we share Christ looks different for everybody. It's not gonna be the same for everyone. Like when you guys grow up, you will be all different kinds of things. Maybe you'll be a teacher or a web designer or a scientist. You are all going to be different things, but I hope that you will all be people who tell others about Jesus. And today we will hear about some small first steps that you can take by simply talking about God at home. That doesn't sound so scary. You can do that. So look for that lesson from Matthew chapter 16 at the end of the video. Hey guys, remember this. Jesus is the answer that the whole world needs, right? And we are the ones that are gonna have to bring Jesus to the people in our lives. So will you join me in committing to practice and prepare ways we can best do that? Because if we're prepared, and then we get the opportunity, we are gonna be ready. Ready to step out in faith and to pass Jesus to another person. So, until next week, remember that we love you. And God is good. All the time.
never gonna stop singing your praise, singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise, singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise, singing your praise. I can't stop, won't stop, never gonna stop singing your praise. we've been talking about commitment. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. So I've been training for a 5K race and guess what? It's only a week away. So I'm a little nervous about it. You see, I haven't told anybody this. This will be my first 5K ever. My friends convinced me that I would enjoy running a 5K. They've been running for years, so I figure they know what they're talking about. We're actually meeting up tomorrow to have a kind of pre-race get-together? I have so many questions to ask them. How long does it take to run a 5K? Will my legs hurt when the race is over? What exactly are we running from? So that should be fun. Or, what if they get tired of all my questions? What if they ask me questions? Will they expect me to know as much as they do? I need to practice what I'll say. So, Erica, what's your favorite part about running? Um, the running part? How many marathons have you run this year? This year? Uh, none. If you were running on a track headed west at 12 miles per hour and a train 127 miles away was traveling from the opposite direction at 84 miles per hour, at what part of the track would you and the train meet? Hmm, I don't know. You don't know? I am not looking forward to this at all. Maybe it'll be easier if I just stand against the wall somewhere and don't say anything. Hopefully today's story will help. It's about saying what's on your mind, even when you don't have all the answers. See you soon. <laughs> the Bible 
It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. Jesus and his 12 closest friends walked along the dusty road from Galilee to the town of Caesarea Philippi. Perhaps Peter walked with James and John. Philippi? Seems out of the way. Eh, maybe that's the point. A little peace and quiet? Jesus can't take two steps in Galilee without a thousand people showing up. Yeah, they say he's... Well, I've heard everything. Peter stared at the high hills ahead one of which was home to a deep cavern said to be the birthplace of a Greek god. Philippi was filled with monuments and temples to other fake gods. Peter? What? Oh. Peter looked around. Jesus and his other friends had stopped under a shady tree. Peter, James, and John stepped off the road to join them. Water break. As his disciples rested, Jesus turned and faced them. Perhaps he knew that here, near Philippi, where so many people believed in false gods, it was important that his disciples knew and spoke the truth. Who do people say the Son of Man is? Jesus' friends understood that when he said Son of Man, he meant himself. Some people say that you're John the Baptist. What people? Hello, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin. Well, that's what they say, just saying. Well, some people say you're Elijah or Jeremiah. Yeah, or one of the prophets. People had been comparing Jesus to many important figures in Jewish history. Men who called the nation to repent. Men who did miracles. Men who spoke the word of God. But Jesus was so much more than that. What about you? Who do you say that I am? As Jesus looked squarely at his disciples, they fidgeted. They had seen Jesus feed thousands of people from one boy's lunch. They'd seen him heal countless sick people. They'd seen him command evil spirits to leave. They knew Jesus was special. But it's one thing to think something and another to say it. Peter, as usual, was the one to take the leap. You are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Jesus smiled. Blessed are you, Simon. No mere human showed this to you. My Father in heaven showed it to you. Here's what I tell you. You are Peter. Jesus was giving Simon a new identity. Peter means stone, something strong, sturdy. Jesus continued. On this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell will not be strong enough to destroy it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. What you lock on earth will be locked in heaven. What you unlock on earth will be unlocked in heaven. The disciples were amazed. Teacher's pet. Hey, we were all thinking it. And I don't know, the whole locking and unlocking thing sounds like a really big responsibility. Jesus knew there were things that would take his friends a while to understand. So he told them. Do not tell anyone yet that I am the Messiah. Okay. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Peter had the courage to speak what he knew to be true. And when the time was right, he would share it with everyone he met. Hmm. So Peter and the other disciples had a lot of questions. People had been wondering for months, years even, who Jesus really was. But it was important for the disciples not to just wonder about, but to talk about it. So Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? Even though they all had thoughts about who Jesus was, Peter was the only one who had the courage to say what he was thinking out loud. Sometimes it can be scary to talk about what you believe about God with other people. What if you have questions? What if people ask you questions? What if there's something you don't know? Well, I've got some good news for you. No one you talk to has all the answers. A lot of people even have the same questions you do. 
That's why it's important to practice talking about God. Sometimes it helps to say something out loud to really know what you believe. And sometimes you can learn something new from someone else. So don't be afraid to get a conversation started. You got a few minutes? I have some questions. Me too. I'm glad I'm not the only one. So, when you're excited about something God has done for you in your life, share it with someone out loud. And when you aren't sure about something, ask your small group leader or someone you know who follows Jesus for wisdom. Together, we can help each other understand what God has done in the past and what he's doing in our lives right now. Here's the one thing to remember today. Practice talking about God. If you have questions, ask. And if you don't know something, say so. And if you think you know an answer, have the courage to say what you're thinking out loud. So, what do you want to talk about? What I always want to talk about. Stuff. Oh, I get it. Because you're a stuffed animal? Yeah, get it? Because I'm made out of stuff. <laughs> okay, I'll go back in my corner. Yeah.